Hi everyone, welcome to um, My Journey with Jesus, a podcast that's just highlighting some of the insights and lessons I have learned as I have, um, as I continue to grow, as I continue to grow in understanding who my Lord and Savior is. And I just wanted to share with you in the hope that my testimony will encourage someone. You know, the, the Bible tells us in Revelation that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so today's episode is just, it's going to be a really short one. But it is my prayer that once we're done, you will be able to, you will be encouraged. You will be encouraged to keep praying, to keep praying and not to stop interceding for your loved ones. So we're going to begin with a word of prayer and then we're going to jump right into it. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, how I thank you. I bless you for this day. This is the day that you have made. I rejoice and I'm glad in it. I bless you, Lord for everything that you continue to teach me, even as I just continue to commit to growing in you. Thank you, Lord, that there is no arrival in you, that every day, every moment represents an opportunity for us to get at an under, a deeper understanding of who you are. But yet your, your works are mighty. We cannot even understand or fully grasp the fullness of who you are. But I thank you, Lord, that there's always something to learn about you. And so I pray this um, day that as people get to watch my testimony, may you be glorified, O oh Lord. And may people be encouraged, may the people be blessed. And may we remember that truly you are a God who loves us. You loved us so much that you gave of yourself. You gave your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that is the promise for which we are holding on to, that once we have received Jesus, we then have access to the abundant life, eternal life, everlasting life, the Zoe life, and we bless you, O Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Even as I speak, may you speak through me. May these words carry the weight Carry your weight, that as they go forth, O Lord, they will accomplish the purpose for which you have sent them, and it shall not return to you void. May you get all glory, may you get all honor out of this um, portion of my testimony. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, sometimes um, there are things that really just... Um, grip me arrest me and one of them is a realization that jesus actually saved me and jesus actually delivered me if you've gone through the rest of my videos the rest of the testimony you will know that prior to 2020 i lived a very um a life that was married with confusion and ignorance disguised by disguised under um or veiled, veiled under wokeness and being spiritually enlightened. What nonsense. I look at some of the things I did and some of the statements I made and I was like, my God, I was so ignorant. And the Bible is very clear that my people perish for lack of knowledge. Um, but even more than that, I'm, I'm always so grateful that the Lord did our work and he saved me and he delivered me exactly at the point he did because I was on my way to death you know the bible says that the wages of sin is death and it might not necessarily be a physical death but there is a death that happens in your soul a spiritual death and that's why you find that many people are seeking many things and it is emptiness one of the things you will constantly hear people who are searching is saying i feel so empty but once you come into the presence and the light and the life of jesus you begin to have a peace. You begin, it's like your search comes to an end and the Lord just takes over that space. Um, so, you know, in the Bible, we're also told that the God of this world, the small G, small G God, the devil has blinded people's heart and, and hardened their heart. So they're not able to fully grasp the knowledge and, and the the gospel of, of Jesus, right? And so it's important to know that for many of our relatives, our aunties, our uncles, our cousins, our spouses, our children, that many people are walking in darkness. They have been covered. So they cannot see 
they do not understand they have no understanding because they have also been sidetracked and distracted let me try and find that first i believe it must be in timothy or second peter or there are two of them um timothy 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 let us see um i'm trying to find this verse here we go this is in um second peter chapter three there are many but i think second peter is is a, a good a good book to read when you read second peter chapter two and you've got second peter chapter three second peter chapter two verse two says but there are also false prophets among the people just as there will be false teachers among you they will secretly introduce destructive heresies even denying the sovereign lord who bought them bringing swift destruction on themselves many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of the truth into disrepute in their greed these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up their condemnation has long been hanging long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping and then we have got the day of the lord this is verse chapter 3 from verse 3. first of all you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come scoffing and following their own desires they will say where is this coming he promised ever since our father dies our fathers died everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation but they deliberately forget that long ago by god's word the heaven existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water by these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed by the same word the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men um um, verse 9 the lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance i will be quick to admit that even me i used to be those ones who said the lord has been coming back since the day i was born but i know that i know that i know that jesus is coming back soon now whether he will come back when we are still alive or when we are long gone and dead that the lord knows but the point is jesus is coming back soon and so it is of urgency that we begin to draw people back into the kingdom and i don't know if you have noticed but time is really moving quickly it's like time has really been accelerated jesus is coming back soon whether it is as we know as we are still here or whether our children are the ones who are going to meet him he is still coming back so i say all that to say all this that in my lifetime my previous lifetime my life prior to jesus christ i was a hot mess i am able to admit it now because i have seen i saw the error of my ways and i'm grateful that the lord has forgiven me and has delivered me from a lot of the things i used to do and so if you're here i just want to tell you that i did not come to jesus on my own accord my sister prayed for me my sister interceded for me when she tells you how she she would pray and just say god please help her she's going down the wrong path please help her please help her please help her and then she also sowed a seed on on my behalf I, and maybe one day she will come on and just give that testimony herself but the lord told her told her to just let him deal with it and the lord has dealt with it and so every time i share the gospel with someone anytime i sit here and and record my testimony and upload it so that somebody else can listen i want you to to know that behind everything i'm doing now somebody prayed for me i also realized and uh, that came to my mind this morning again was that my grandmother is an intercessor my grandmother has prayed for each of her children my aunts, my uncles, my mom included. My my grandmother prays. She prays for the, her, her different houses, the different homes of her children. My grandmother prayed. 
my grandmother still prays mentioning each one of us each of her grandchildren her great grandchildren her children by name before the lord and i want to believe that on account of those prayers the lord also preserved my life because if i'm being very honest i should have literally been dead literally but it is prayers i have come to understand that you know prayers are seeds you sow when you sow a seed you sow it to the expectation of a harvest and so we begin to send prayers forth knowing that one day it's going to release a harvest bless us with a harvest you may not know when but the thing we are sure of the bible tells us for as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest time are a sure thing so it is a principle that has been embedded into the workings of the universe by god and so this is important because for a long time i have felt this pressing that many believers are looking at their relatives and wondering what's going on with them how are they going to end up you can see you don't need to be you don't need to be a genius to know that this part that you're going on your your people are going on is going to lead them to death and destruction you can clearly see so the lord has me here this day just to remind you that don't stop interceding for your loved ones we are at a very critical and crucial time um and oh yeah this is this is actually it this is it you know, when I became saved and the Lord has helped me, the Lord has healed me, the Lord has cleaned me up. I, I graduated from being part of the harvest to now a laborer in the vineyard. And that's that's it. That's who we all are. So when you become, you, you'll notice that it's very interesting that the people whom the Lord just kind of saves, then he puts this fire in them to go and spread the good news of Jesus and what Jesus has done for them. And then now we, we, we graduate and we transition. We are no longer the harvest. We are no longer the ones who are being prayed for. We are the ones who are now going to pray for people and the ones who are going to draw people back into the kingdom of God. So I just want to encourage you. The Bible tells us in Second, um, in First Timothy from chapter, chapter 2. Let me see where First Timothy is. Timothy. Um, first Timothy chapter two from verse four to six. I'm reading from the NIV verse three. Okay. Verse four. No, verse three. This is good and pleases God our savior who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And God wants all men to be saved. That includes your unsaved uncle, auntie, father, mother, husband, wife, child, cousin, nephew. And the truth is people come from families. So we all come from a family. There's nobody who comes from a vacuum somewhere, which means that those people who are unsaved are part of somebody's family. And it then becomes our responsibility as believers to intercede for the salvation of our, of our family members. Because the Bible here tells us God wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And I just want to encourage you that your prayers are important. James chapter 5 tells us the um, fervent effective prayers of the righteous availeth much. How are they made effective? By the Holy Spirit praying through us and for us according to Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Because we know not how we ought to pray as we should. And also by praying the word of God. And I have done a bit of my testimony concerning the word of God. So you can go back and just stand, get an understanding of why the word of God is so powerful. So allowing the Holy Spirit to make intercession through you. And praying the scripture of God concerning salvation is very important and we are going to see results no matter how long it takes we are going to see results if we don't quit declaring the word of god declaring the promises of god concerning the salvation of our loved ones we will see the result i am proof that when somebody prays for you and prays earnestly and prays effectively the lord does the rest of the work you do your part and allow the lord to do the rest because the conviction could only come to jesus 
come through Jesus. There were certain things I could not hear. No matter how loud somebody spoke, I could not hear. And the Holy Spirit is quickening me to remember the story of the conversion of Saul to Paul. Saul was the man who was killing the Christians. And, he, and on, on the day Stephen the martyr was being killed, Saul was holding the coat of the men who were stoning him. Apostle Paul, who was formerly called Saul, the man who, who, has, who gave us two-thirds of the New Testament, was the same man who was stoning one of the, the Lord's um, apostles and disciples, Stephen. Look at how merciful and how kind God is. And Saul eventually came to have his own encounter with, with Jesus where the scales were removed from his eyes and he was commissioned and sent. And one of the things you have to realize is that everybody has a great destiny in God. It is the enemy who has come to hijack and to try and sidetrack, to come and steal, kill, and destroy so that you don't step into the fullness of your un uh, assignment. I would never have known that God wanted to use me as he's using me now if I was still, if I had still insisted on the path of distraction. I shudder even thinking of what my, in fact, no, let me not say I shudder. I know I would have been dead deader than dead and I, when i say that i mean like out like i would not be on this earth if i had insisted on going the route i was going it is god in his mercy answering my sister's intercession and prayer who snatched me literally snatched me from the jaws of death i don't say that to try and hype myself up I don't. I say that because I saw my end. I saw my end. I would have died. And so I thank God for saving me. I thank God. And so when you're praying for them, your loved ones, stand on Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. It says, this was Joshua talking to the Israelites when he was coming towards the end of his life. Chapter 14. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Stand on, on this prayer and declare loudly that as for me and my household, as for me and my children, as for me and my spouse, as for me and my, my relatives, as for me and my siblings, as for me and my parents, we will serve the Lord and declare that and declare that and declare that. One of the things that the Bible says about the word of the Lord, it's like a hammer that breaks the rocks to pieces. If you really just break down that Bible verse, first of all, we know a hammer cannot break a rock. It is impossible. A, ram, a hammer is a small thing and a rock is a big thing. Hammers don't break rocks. But the Lord is saying that his word is a hammer. His word will literally break to smithereens those rocks. And if you look at the definition of the rock from the concordance, it's like a fortress, a stronghold. So the word of God, and this just tells me that to the word of God, a stronghold and a fortress is a very small thing. He'll break it down with his word. So stand on the word of God. Declare Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 over your loved ones. Begin to call them back into the kingdom of God. Begin to pray. Go back and read the account of how Saul was converted into Saul. And especially where the scales fell off his uh, his eyes. Begin to declare that the scales of de uh, deception that are blocking your family members from accepting christ begin to fall off in the name of jesus and by the power of the holy spirit begin to call them back into the kingdom of god begin to declare that your your family members are translated from the kingdom of darkness and are brought into the kingdom of, of jesus 
uh, the son of God. Begin to declare those scriptures and begin to insist. Insist on the word of God. I feel like I should let somebody know. Insist on the word of God. Insist on the efficacy of the word of God. Insist on the power of the word of God. The word of the Lord is a sword of the spirit. It is a weapon. Insist on the weapon that is the word of the Lord concerning your family members. Don't stop interceding. Their future depends on your prayer. And the Lord will absolutely hold you accountable. In fact, I was reading Ezekiel this morning. And it was so interesting to me that the Lord was telling Ezekiel that if you don't tell these people what I have told you, I will hold you accountable. But if you tell them and they don't listen, then you will be saved because you will have obeyed me. And I feel like this is a word for someone. The Lord has been burdening you and putting it in your heart to pray for your loved ones but you keep putting it off you will be held accountable so intercede 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 plant those seeds plant those seeds so granted during the former days i would not listen to anybody so people would talk to me about the gospel should come out from sky to get in here and come out here but you know you never forget something so don't don't be hesitant even in sharing or speaking god's word of life into your people i think this is important for people we care about for friends for family for relatives that we continually speak the word of god because the word of god is also a seed so when you can and you're in conversation as the holy spirit leads you also begin to drop those seeds drop those seeds let people see you pray even if they will not close their eyes let them see you pray they will remember all these things are seeds and the good thing is a seed doesn't have to be like this big a seed is a very tiny thing but when it is planted and given into the care of the lord he's the one who does the rest um the other place where you can pray for your loved ones is to pray ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 20 uh let me find that ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 20 i would ask that you go and read ephesians chapter 1 the whole of it in different versions and in different uh, translations so that you're just able to to hear language i come to find that one of the more enjoyable ways for me to learn the word of god is to look at different translations and just begin to see what 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 are they trying to say always studying of course with the king james or nkjv and then using the other contemporary translations just for for language right so ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 20 we keep asking i keep asking that the god of our lord jesus christ the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better so you can draw your prayer points from this particular scripture that lord that lord they will get to know you better that the eyes of their hearts may be enlightened in order that they may know the hope to which you father have called them the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints and your incomparably great power towards us who believe that power that works uh, that is like the working of your mighty strength, which you exerted in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in the heavenly realms. So we used to pray this prayer from the King James Version. Today I'm reading from the NIV, which is where I'm struggling a little bit. But please go and read Ephesians chapter 1. Actually, the whole of Ephesians. From Ephesians, you can draw a lot of prayer points on how to intercede for your loved ones as the Holy Spirit leads you. And so I'm just going to stop us stop here and i want to pray that um this has blessed you i it's very brief as i have said but i just want to encourage you don't stop praying for your loved ones their lives depend on your prayers their assignment depends on you praying for them standing in the gap standing in the gap in your family every time you pray remember this person and ask the lord to remember them remember to declare that as for you and your household you will serve the lord and one day you will come back with a testimony and a, tr a praise report of what the lord has done for you so i pray for you 
I pray for you that the Lord will give you the strength and the grace through his Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will guide you on how to pray for your loved ones. The Holy Spirit will even begin to speak to you about specific things that he would like you to pray for on behalf of your family and especially when it comes to those who are living in darkness um those who are living under deception that the lord will the holy spirit will teach you how to pray for them and may the lord bless you even as you 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 participate in soul winning by interceding for your loved ones in jesus precious name i have prayed amen <laughs>